Hi, my name's Lisa Miles. I'm reading an extract here from the first chapter of A Game of Murder. It's set in Edinburgh. Um, it does also travel down to Newcastle and Berwick-upon-Tweed, but mostly at Edinburgh at the Edinburgh Fringe. And this extract, we're meeting Trixie, who is walking home from a day operating the um, mobile muffin stand. Och, well, I hope you do better than I. Trixie watched Rob disappear into the mass of people. The Edinburgh Festival grew bigger every year, with performers from all over the world participating, as well as a huge international audience. She felt alive from the buzz of the crowd, heading to a multitude of events. She sold out of pretty much everything except for the boxes of biscuits. The festival muffin, chocolate with raspberry sauce, had sold out first, another Trixie invention. It had taken several tries to get the recipe right, but the fudgy brownie texture with the raspberry filling was a winner. Rose had been worried it was too much like a brownie to call it a muffin, but the shop regulars who had tasted persuaded her and Trixie's festival muffin was launched. Night she called across to her neighbouring stall holder as she made her way to Northbridge and the marble steps on the walk back to Morrison Street. The Scotsman steps linking the old and new parts of Edinburgh had it reopened last year. Transformed from a dilapidated and dangerous blight on the city, they had formed part of an art commission, bringing art out of the gallery and onto the streets. Trixie loved walking on the different layers of coloured marble, but tonight, as she saw the empty vodka bottle and the figure of a young man wearing blue jeans and a dark hoodie lying on his front across one of the marble steps, she was reminded of earlier times, before the renovation, and personally. Trixie called out, then stepped to one side, making her way around him. She had learned from experience. Getting too close to a collapsed drunk can mean ending up with a black eye. Yet despite the vodka bottle, the young man didn't look like a drunk. Hey, pal, you are right? She stood and waited to see if there was a response. Hey, pal, she called again, louder this time. Again, there was no response. Trixie stared at the prone body. He didn't seem to be moving, and she couldn't hear any grunts or snorts that usually went with passing out from too much booze. She leaned in and decided to prod his leg. Nothing. A young couple were heading up the stairs when they saw Trixie bending over the man, changed their minds and went back. Hey, I didn't think he sat well. Can you help? Trixie called after them but they had vanished by the time her words were out. She pulled out her phone and called Rose. There was no answer. Trixie hesitated. She knew she couldn't just leave him there, but she wanted to run, not get involved, like she had the last time. Are you all right? A man's voice called out. Trixie hadn't heard him coming down the stairs towards her. No, he's not moving. Let me see. The man edged his way past until he was on the same step as Trixie. He tried for a pulse. Use your phone. We need an ambulance. I think he's alive, just. But I'm not a medic. Trixie pressed 999. Her hands were shaking. And once she'd made the call, it took forever for emergency services to arrive because of, crowd, because of the crowds and the location. Trixie couldn't sit still as they waited. She was cold, despite the warm evening. The man with her unbuttoned the top of the black floor-length cloak he was wearing and offered it to her. But Trixie refused the gesture. Thanks, but I didn't think it would make a difference. It's in my bones. It's near that Baltic you, after all. He nodded. Well, OK, they should be here soon. I hear sirens, at least. Trixie and the man stood close to the wall above the poor soul as the ambulance crew made their way up the stairs, followed by two uniformed police. Within seconds, he was loaded onto a stretcher. And as they lifted him, a playing card fell from his pocket. Trixie went to catch it. Don't touch it! One of the officers shouted at her, making her jump. Sorry? The card fell face up. It was an arty version of the Queen of Spades.